What most people do is they say, I want the new house, the new car, the new relationship, I want a, a big bank account, I want my private jet, you know, they do all that stuff. And then they visualize that. When they visualize it, they never get in touch with how it would feel if it happened. In fact, they're hypnotized and, and conditioned into feeling the emotion when it happened. So they may do a little, a little meditation or a little whatever, and they open their eyes and their senses say it's not there. So what do they do? They experience more lack, more separation. So when you're feeling lack and separation, you try harder. And now they try matter to matter to try to produce the outcome because they're feeling separate from their future. So then thoughts are the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts electromagnetic energy that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the experience back to you. So then if the person is living in anger, impatience, resentment, frustration, and they're holding the intention of their future, That's mind and body in opposition. There's, there's no vibrational match between anything in their future because they're saying, why hasn't it happened? And they're waiting for their healing to begin so that they feel gratitude. They're waiting for their success to feel abundance or empowerment. They're waiting uh, for their new relationship to feel love. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect, Newtonian physics. Waiting for something outside to change how we feel inside. And if you're living in that lack and you consciously or unconsciously know that you're creating your future you're creating more lack and if you're reacting to the people and conditions in your life that are all known to you then your thoughts and feelings are equal to everything that you know you keep creating the same life so then if you have truly changed then close your eyes disconnect from the environment sit your body down don't get up and do anything don't be in the program of the future the past and relax into the present moment and now teach your body emotionally what that future feels like before it happens. Now why? The stronger the emotion you feel from the future you're creating, the more you're going to pay attention to the pictures in your mind. And you're going to begin to remember your future. And biologically, it's the same as remembering your past. So then, you have to stay in the feeling of that future in order for you to be aligned to that destiny. And if you lose the feeling because of traffic or a coworker, and you start feeling another emotion, you just disconnected from the energy of your future. Now you're back to the energy of your past. And if you tell me it's because of that person that caused it, I'm going to say, oh, you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim. You're telling me that you're allowing something or someone outside of you to control how you feel and how you think. And that's a program. So then it takes great consciousness. It takes great work. This is where we're living. Our mind is living in the sea of the 400 billion bits of information that's constantly bombarding our brain in a second, but we keep choosing the same input into our brain. And the first law of the mind is called the law of association. And the law of association is how the yellow brain works. We use or identify past experiences to really build a bigger model. We identify with our knowns. When you associate, you're drawing from your present knowledge base to be able to understand. Didn't I say that a neuron looks like a big tree? How many people image that? The moment you image that, you associated what? A neuron with a tree. And you went, oh yeah, I know what that looks like. So we learn by these associations. And those associations develop a groundwork to listen. It makes a groundwork to accept things as ordinary or common. You know, when you're a child, you're constantly, why, why do children constantly interact with their environment and pick things up and do all that stuff? Because their brain is learning at an alarming rate. And what they're doing is trying to sort out the laws so that it all becomes ordinary. And they scientifically know that between the age of five and seven, they've developed critical facilities. So they start developing those critical facilities. And of course, it's accelerated by television and everything else because they're gathering more data at an alarming rate that's giving them an in information to associate with. So law of association says, I associate with my present knowledge base to be able to understand 
another concept or another idea. That's a great thing. That's a good thing that the yellow brain should do. The second law of the brain is called the law of repetition. And the law of repetition says, if I do something over and over again, what's going to happen? It's going to become common or ordinary or easy. Think about any skill or task that you've ever learned. At first you start to learn it and it's hard and you can't get it, but you, what do you do? You keep practicing it over and over again until it becomes common or easy or ordinary. Now I use this example when I do my lectures to the beginning students, but here's a great example of the law of association and law of repetition. When I was in college and I had roommates, I had roommates that always fell asleep when they studied. Well, I studied at my desk and they laid on their bed and read the book. And within 15 minutes, I'd look over my shoulder, and they would be face planted into the book, drool all over the book. Now, what does the law of association, law of repetition say? Law of association says, I associate bed with, and I go to bed every, no, so that's gonna, that's gonna be an ordinary or an unconscious process, and you can guarantee that in 15 minutes, that, that associative pattern is gonna put them to sleep. You understand? So we learn by the law of association, the law of repetition, and they give rise to habits and behaviors. And that's a great thing. That's how we build models of thought. If I said, if you could see the nerves coming out of the spine, they look like spaghettis coming out of there. Can everybody see what that looks like? That's how we associate. You have made that uncommon process very common. You've made it ordinary. You've had to review it over in your mind. You've had to model it in your brain. You've had to picture yourself doing it. You've had to do it almost to the point where you're bored that many times. And there comes a moment where it clicks, right? And you've just what? Had a very linear process become very non-linear. And the moment that that happens, this part of the brain is endorsing that neural net. It's giving it permission to happen. And when that happens, you can drive your stick shift, have a conversation, drink a cup of coffee, talk on the phone, you know, steer with your knee, do all of that stuff, right? But if I asked you to do that when you're initially starting out, you didn't have enough neural connections up there. So I said to them, and I was appealing to the neurologists in the room, I said, so neurologically, if we can make those connections in our brain and you had the science of manifesting something from nothing, out of nowhere. Then, would everybody agree with me that the moment that we practice that over and over again, that that uncommon process would become very common? So, could you have a conversation at the dinner table and just manifest a loaf of bread? You could absolutely do it. It would be no effort to do, just like to drive your car. Because it would be hooked up neurologically to this part of the brain. And once it's hooked up here, it becomes very ordinary. The person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened. Now think about this. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion to, for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions that we feel separation and then we start looking for it again. Well then, if you're waiting, you're not creating, you're, you're in separation again. So then, so then, whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being, what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then if you wake up in the morning and you come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're going to fall back into routine. 
So then we want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it, and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're gonna pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future and biologically, it's exactly the same as remembering your past. In fact, if you're not being defined by a vision in the future, it means you're making your past more real than your future. Mm -hmm. You're falling in love with your past. You're more in love with your past than you are with your future. That you're believing in your past more than you're believing in your future. When you get to that moment where you have that feeling, that's your compass because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's gonna drive more of those thoughts. And when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And, and you will be initiated in, by the universe into wealth. You will be initiated into health. You'll be initiated into freedom. Those people, all those people that have healed themselves of all those different health conditions, they are so humble so happy and they feel so great that they would never trade this feeling because of what you thought of them they've left that program behind a long time ago they actually don't care how you think of them they actually are so happy with themselves that they're no longer dependent on anything outside of them now I think that's a really important moment because that's the moment we give people permission in our lives to do the same right and I think that more and more people are beginning to figure that out uh, as they do this work.